As we discussed in this section on one-dimensional motion, an object that is in the process of slowing down or speeding up is undergoing acceleration. So, what is the relationship between force and acceleration? Newton's second law gives us the answer. It states that the total net force acting on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. Notice that both the net force and the acceleration are vector quantities. What does net force mean? It is the vector sum of all the forces acting on an object. Newton's second law is probably the most important equation in mechanics. The units of force are newtons. One newton is equal to one kilogram, meter per second squared. Let's look at some numbers. According to Newton's second law, how much force is needed to accelerate an object of mass 10 kilograms at a rate of 5 meters per second squared? The answer is 50 newtons. Now it's your turn to answer a question. If we exert a constant force of 100 newtons on a 5 kilogram object, how fast will it accelerate? Correct. The correct answer is obtained from the equation acceleration equals force divided by mass, in which force is equal to 100 newtons and mass is equal to 5 kilograms. From this, we find that acceleration equals 20 meters per second squared. Often, forces in nature are not confined to one dimension. Therefore, to evaluate the net force and the net acceleration on an object, we need to treat the forces as vectors. Let's start with a simple example. Let's assume that two people are each pushing a 10 kilogram crate with an equal force of 100 newtons as shown. In our coordinate system with x to the right and y toward the top of the picture, person number one is pushing with a force of 100 newtons in the positive x direction. And person number two is pushing with 100 newtons in the positive y direction. The net force is therefore given by the vector sum of the two forces. Since Newton's second law states that F equals MA, the acceleration is given by the equation A equals F divided by M. The acceleration vector points in the same direction as the net force. Plugging in the force and the mass, we obtain the acceleration of the crate, which has components in the x and y directions. To obtain the magnitude of the acceleration, we add the square of the x and y components of the acceleration vector and take the square root. The answer is approximately 14 meters per second squared. To find the direction of the acceleration, we take the ratio of ay and ax, which is equal to tangent of the angle theta. The answer is theta equals 45 degrees. Three forces are acting on the 10 kilogram crate shown from above in the picture. A force of 10 newtons pointing to the right at an angle of 45 degrees, a force of 15 newtons pointing to the left at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical, and a horizontal force of 10 newtons pointing to the left. Your goal is to find the magnitude of forces F1 and F2 in the horizontal and vertical directions respectively, which are required to keep the crate from accelerating. You will then combine F1 and F2 into one force and calculate the magnitude and direction of this force. To find the magnitude of F1 and F2 needed to balance the three existing forces, enter a number for each force in the box provided and press the Check Answer button. Remember, your goal is to obtain zero acceleration in both the X and Y directions. F1 and F2 can be thought of as the horizontal and vertical components of a single force. Using the values you found for F1 and F2, you can calculate the magnitude of the new force F and the angle this force makes with the X axis.